Ling Chun Lee's going to give a nice little uh, talk here. Enjoy the show, enjoy the food, and then uh, afterwards, if there are some questions, we can take some questions. Okay. Sounds good? Great. Your Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope you get yeah, this is a small, informal bit, uh, setting, so feel free to ask questions. Um, I know it's really early, so I appreciate you showing up. Um, so I will talk to you a little bit about the AP Maldi coupled with uh, Orbitrap a platform for high spatial and high mass spectral resolution for in situ analysis of biomolecules. But before doing that, I just want to give you a quick overview of the kind of research that we do in our group. So we are a bioanalytical mass spectrometry group. We're interested in developing a great variety of different mass spectrometry strategies to look at, for example, neural peptides using crustacean as one of our major model system but also the mammalian system. Our lab also work on a number of these different uh, chemical tags to develop these strategies for high throughput quantitative glycoproteomics, proteomics, and glycomics. In terms of the mass spectrometry methodologies, one area that we are very active on is the eye mobility mass spec to understand peptide structural conformation changes, uh, but also a big area that we're going to touch on today is more on the mass spectrometry imaging. So as many of you in this room know, at molecular uh, imaging strategies, there are several uh, ways. One is the traditional, using antibody-based approach that you have to know in advance what you're looking for. Usually it's recognizing one or two classes of molecules. So mass spectrometry imaging compared to that is, first of all, it's label-free. No labels required. So the biomolecules are functionally unmodified. And also, imaging mass spec allow you to deal with post translational modifications or metabolize when sometimes the antibodies are not available. And also, you can get uh, more detailed chemical information. I will show some examples. And uh, best of all, you, this is a really kind of a multiplexing technology that you can uh, do highly parallel measurements. So showing on the top is actually a uh, fermerfamide antibody staining for a fomerfamide peptide in this crustacean stomach of gastric ganglion. And here in the bottom are actually mass spectrometry images for three different protein ions. As you can see, these three different colors, even though we don't know what the identities, we can still map their spatial distribution. So mass spec imaging, uh, depending on the type of ionization methods you can use, there are MALDI, DESI, or secondary ion, mass spectrometry, SIMS, LASI, and, and so on. And also you can do two-dimensional or three-dimensional images. So for example, you can, for each of these uh, slides, you can map your spot to the spatial distribution. If you do serial cutting and then try to stack these 2D images together, you can uh, construct three-dimensional ion images, or you can also do this kind of a depth profiling. So uh, my talk t- today will be focusing primarily on MALDI mass spectrometry imaging. And MALDI mass spec is actually very versatile. You can actually look at a great variety of different biomolecules, such as proteins, peptides, but also a lot of these lipids and small molecule drugs or drug metabolites. So typical mass spectrometry imaging workflow. Start with your animal favorite and then dissect out specific uh, tissue or organ of interest. In this case, you could look at a brain and then embed the tissue in gelatin snap freeze it and then do cryosection. And after that, we can apply matrix and then do uh, mass spectrometry imaging. So basically you raster the tissue, uh, um, the laser beam against the tissue section uh, through this kind of a predefined grid and generate this kind of a array of mass spectra. So for each mass to charge ratio, you can actually construct uh, this kind of an ion density map. So this is basically an uh, illustration of the process. So here is actually a, a section of the, the rat brain. So we can define the area we want to image. And then when the laser beam irradiates at each XY position, you generate a mass spectra like this and you generate a composite mass spectra for this entire array of uh, tissue and uh, mass spectra. And then we can actually uh, reconstruct the ion density map for each of 
is individual M over Z mass to charge ratio. So today I'm going to highlight three different uh, projects, um, primarily starting with the goal to improve spatial resolution and how we can develop better and more robust protocols to improve our mass spectrometry imaging results. And then I'll also talk to you a little bit about our effort on expanding the detection range, in particular for high resolution mass spectrometry, uh, mass spectrometers such as Orbitrap type of instrument, and then talk a little bit about uh, the efficient biomolecule identification and structural elucidation and give uh, plenty of examples of uh, neural peptides, glycans, lipids, and metabolite imaging mass spectrometry. So the first project actually starting out with our coupling with uh, MassTex uh, atmospheric pressure, AP MALDI, uh, this uh, ultra high resolution uh, platform with our Orbitrap type of accurate, high resolution accurate mass uh, measurement and uh, trying to get both, the goal is to get both high resolution, high mass spectral resolution and also high spatial resolution. So just a little bit about uh, AP MALDI. So obviously this provides, uh, I should say, uh, most of our other kind of a major platform is uh, thermals, uh, MALDI Orbitrap is a vacuum system. So a lot of our work here is to compare the AP MALDI with the vacuum MALDI. So that's uh, actually represent a very attractive alternative because it's very easy to interchange between the ESI source. So when we do LCMS experiment uh, versus we can do this AP MALDI is a very quick switch and it's easy of sample introduction and also can hand handle the sample at atmospheric pressure. And uh, we can do volatile analyze and also this um, design and ion transfer efficiency is pretty high. And another advantage that I will highlight is that this would also allow us to do multiple types of ionization. MALDI being one and also uh, some variants such as the novel ionization techniques for multiplate charge ions, uh, such as uh, LSI and, and MAI. And also this, as I mentioned, enabled high resolution mass spec imaging. So when we talk about mass, 240,000 mass resolution at M over Z 200, and in space smaller than 10 micron spatial resolution. So again, going back to this uh, sem uh, the imaging workflow, one area that our focus is to improve the sample preparation to, uh, to get better uh, quality of the mass spectral imaging. So one area is to uh, optimize these different procedure. For example, we want to preserve, maximum preserve our uh, the tissue uh, uh, morphology. And here we employ protease inhibitor, for example, and also using uh, denator, which is a device that can rapidly heat the tissue to stop the degradation enzyme. And then following that, we can do tissue rinse and with uh, the matrix application. So here we can use both the uh, automated TM sprayer, artist airbrush, or other uh, variety of different uh, matrix deposition. So with this kind of approach, we can actually, uh, with the AP MALDI, we can get um, pretty good spatial resolution, but also sensitive uh, detection of neural peptides. In this case, we're looking at a crustacean uh, neuropeptides at just different uh, lobes. And as you can see here, we have a number of these different RFMIs with both sodiated and potassium additives, and also a bunch of other peptides. So this is uh, actually a very nice result, considering in general, AP MALDI is not that sensitive, but this allows us to map the spatial distribution of some of these low abundance neuropeptides. And another area of our work is to try to uh, improve the spatial resolution. And showing here are some of the results for looking at uh, the spatial distribution of these uh, rapidly, the lipid signals, as you can see, they actually show pretty good uh, uh, spatial resolution. So now I want to come to the, this kind of a dilemma for high resolution trade-off. So obviously we're using, as mentioned, either MALDI LTQ Orbitrap or these other Orbitrap type of instrument. And for MALDI, as we know, that primarily single H hard ions are generated. And our MALDI uh, Orbitrap has a 4,000 M over Z mass range. However, if we want to detect this wide range of molecular ions from metabolite, peptide glycan, but also a lot of these proteins, 
some of these uh, molecular weight are a lot bigger. So we want to expand our uh, mass res uh, our uh, mass range. So in order to do that with our uh, multi uh, instrument, uh, also in general, just for, for multi imaging, we have been actually exploring uh, the, the combination of multi and ESI, which is also known as magic ionization, which was actually first proposed uh, by Sarah Trimpensa, who's actually receiving a Beeman Award uh, this Tuesday. And so the general idea is to uh, use this kind of special matrix to help us to generate multiply charged ions in the multi source that allows us to look at bigger molecules that we were not able to look at with our uh, 4,000 M over Z upper mass range. So one of the uh, ionization techniques that we look at is the laser spray ionization, uh, which utilizes this uh, two MPG, two nitro uh, fluoroglucinol, which is a very labile uh, kind of a, a volatile matrix to generate this kind of a to generate these uh, multiply charge ions. I'll show you the example. And another variant of this ionization is matrix-assisted ionization. Again, this was using the three uh, MBN, which is also without the use of laser or high voltage. And the general mechanism here is to through sublimation and triboluminescence uh, process. And, and this procedure also allows us to generate ESI-like multiply charge ions. So the advantage of combining the two, uh, the LASI or the LSI or the MAVE, is basically help us to preserve <coughs> some of the unique advantages of MOLI where we want to look at in situ analysis that directly look at the tissue sample without much preparation. Also, it's more tolerant to sample contaminants and minimum sample preparation. However, as we know that singly charged ions, one is that we have a limited mass range but also because singly charged ions tend to produce limited fragmentation. So this, if uh, generate multiply charged ions would improve the fragmentation efficiency. So I'll show you some of the examples on the, uh, that we uh, employ these different techniques on the AP multi uh, coupled with our QEHF. So here show some uh, two examples for looking at neural peptides. The top one is the bradykinin. And here in the model, we can see predominantly singly charged ions and LSI laser spray ionization. We generate actually a pretty uh, decent amount of doubly charged ions. And may I actually produce more uh, doubly charged ions. Another example comes from neuropeptide Y, which uh, weighs 4270. So that's actually already exceeding our multi orbitrap uh, mass range. So as you can see, we don't see much of the signal but uh, LSI and, and MAI allows us to detect these multiply charge ions, uh, you know, up to five plus charge ions. And another example to show that we can also look at a lot bigger molecules such as myoglobin, which weighs 17 uh, kilodon. So here, as you can see, the zoom in, we, uh, this is a 15 plus charge cluster, but we can actually uh, observe up to uh, 18 plus charge states for, for this a myoglobin molecule in the multi source. And this is another example to look at a more complex protein uh, uh, tissue extracts. It's the rat brain uh, protein extraction. As you can see, we have a number of these protein uh, and then also these multiply charge species being detected. So, one advantage for us to uh, generate these multiply charge ions is to improve fragmentation efficiency. So highlighted here is the example for bradykinin. So singly charged multi, as you can see, uh, we get, because there's basic residues present, so we have some uh, fragmentation, but made the plus one charge, and as you can see from the plus two doubly charged ions, generate much more rich fragmentation that really allows us to do better uh, sequencing or structural characterization. One more example to show that using this kind of uh, uh, ionization to uh, the multiply charge uh, molecule can pr improve fragmentation. So here again is a rat brain or a peptide extract for POM C fragments. So singly charged ions actually didn't detect much of the fragmentation, but doubly charged ions, as you can see, that we get actually pretty decent fragmentation. And the triply charged ions, we get a lot more uh, rich 
Brad mentioned that really highlights the, the benefit of generating these multiple charge ions. So the final, the, the other aspect of uh, producing these multiple charge ions and multi source is that we can actually better deal with and, and analyze label post translational modifications such as phosphorylation or glycosylation as they play an important role in biological systems and these soft ionization really help to preserve some of these uh, very labile modification, including uh, using, for example, uh, ETD uh, to look at some of these more labile modification. Here we're looking at a glycopeptide EPO, uh, the full MS spectrum, and then here, uh, as you can see, the CID, we got actually a bunch of these uh, loss of uh, these labile uh, glyco uh, modification. And when we perform uh, the, in this case, the HCD fragmentation <coughs> again, we get more fragmentation, but still these blue lines showing that majority actually have a loss of these uh, modification sites. And the final uh, spectrum is showing that we use electron transfer dissociation. Now we can actually get a lot more these C and Z ions with these uh, GALNAC being preserved. So that's show in the multi store. So that's actually pretty uh, phenomenal and beneficial to really show that we can use this uh, technique to look at more label PPM analysis. So to kind of summarize uh, these first two aspects, I hope that will show you that using the high resolution atmospheric pressure MALDI source, we can achieve both high resolution in mass and also in space. So in mass, we're talking about 240K, depending on the, the orbit trap instrument that you're using. And the space, uh, in spatial resolution, we can get down to 10 micron versus our MALDI uh, vacuum model is 75 microns, so that's a lot worse in terms of spatial resolution. And also the production of multiple charged ions that allows us to expand the mass range and also improve the fragmentation efficiency and being able to analyze these PP, uh, more label post translational modifications. So next I want to tell you a little bit more about our effort on uh, improving the identification and structural elucidation uh, with multi mass spectrometry uh, imaging. So, uh, in general, we are doing, so this case, uh, this is a, a picture that we actually using multi orbitrap uh, system doing in situ data dependent analysis for uh, neuropeptide, where we want to couple the multiplex imaging mass spec with gas based fractionation was the goal to improve and get. Uh, structural information. So showing here is our workflow for doing the multi orbitrap mass spec imaging for crustacean stomach gastric ganglion. So this is our blue crab species and we take specific tissue organ of interest and do cryostat tissue section and spray the matrix in this case using an automatic uh, matrix sprayer and uh, use a multi mass spec imaging uh, orbitrap system and then try to do this kind of a, a spiral step. So here uh, showing the kind of our general uh, sequencing step. So here we have these uh, a, a raster step, which is 150 micron, and then we can divide them into nine steps. So in the middle, we can do the full MS scan and then follow by two to nine. So this would allow us to do targeted tendon mass spec uh, images. So in general, people may realize that mass spec imaging, uh, there are a couple of challenges. One is that most of these identification or uh, peptide assignments based on accurate mass matching. So those are punitive identification. And also even if we do targeted MSMS, this would give you confident identification and confirmation. However, it could be really slow. So we want to adopt what's a very actually routine in LCESI MS flow is to do data dependent acquisition. So we can fragment top end IS after full scan. In this case, for example, we can select these top three most abundant IS and do MSMS analysis. So in this case, if we do the linear data dependent MSI, if we have the full MS and then the third after this uh, 150 micron scan, the MSMS would be actually pretty further away from this original uh, parent uh, ion spectrum. So this would actually create a not so uh, a nice or high resolution image. However, if we do this kind of a spiral multiplex, 
uh, image, then we get actually a much more continuous spatial distribution and better and higher sensitivity in this case to look at specific neuropeptides. So another consideration is because that we're looking at uh, to tissue directly, so that's in situ analysis, we don't have a front end separation. So we want to further improve our mass spec uh, precursor ion selection. As we know, so in tissue samples, usually it's rich and high abundance is dysphosphate lipids. And our neuropeptide region is actually in this kind of a lower abundance region. So what we want to create is kind of a pseudo fractionation, gas-based fractionation strategy, where we can, for example, here, divide our mass range into different regions. So here we have the low mass, more phospholipid rich region. We can do one full MS followed by two MS MS, and then uh, followed by another full MS here in the neuropeptide rich region and do another MS MS. So that's the, our general strategy here to do this kind of a gas-based fractionation and step seven followed by the eight and nine. And using this approach, we can actually uh, generate a pretty good um, a tissue map and also for each of these individual uh, fragment ions, we can actually get pretty uh, decent sequence specific fragment ions. So these are uh, de novo sequencing results from directly from these individual uh, cells or neuronal clusters. And showing on the top is the collective uh, mass spectra and color coded with different neuropeptide families. But here in the bottom shows the supporting uh, uh, MS MS spectra to really uh, support our identification. So, using this multiplex data dependent acquisition mass spec imaging, we were able to achieve simultaneous localization and identification. And the pseudo gas phase separation really allows us to improve the precursor selection and detect even novel peptides by de novo sequencing. So showing here is one example. Using this approach, we can uh, de novo sequence this peptide and also map the location of this peptide in the, uh, the crab brain. And altogether, we're able to identify uh, 18 novel neuropeptides from this single slice of 10 to 12 micron uh, tissue size of crab brain with the uh, in-situ MSMS identification. So besides neuropeptides, we're also interested in looking at small molecule neurotransmitters. So this is one example that we can actually use imaging mass spec to look at small molecule uh, neurotransmitter in particular interested in some of the metabolites and also like a, a, a classical neurotransmitters. However, in general, many of these would, sub, uh, would actually suffer from low mass, the matrix interference, and also low general low ionization efficiency. So there we're actually using a DPP-TFP derivatization to help improve the ionization. So this work was done by uh, a graduate student, Qinjin Wenzhao. So here we can look at the on tissue profiling. So this is the matrix alone, as you can see, a number of these uh, small molecules being detected. However, some of these major uh, neurotransmitters, such as dopamine or uh, GABA, uh, and uh, serotonin, a lot of these were not detected until we do this on tissue derivatization that really helped to enhance the ionization. And uh, this is another example to show there are uh, selected ion images that we can look at. Um, the matrix, so here we can look at the optical image and also small molecule choline, acetylcholine, and a number of these uh, other amino acids being detected just with the matrix alone. However, with the matrix plus the on tissue derivatization, we can see actually many more neurotransmitters that uh, people are probably recognize, for example, GABA and also dopamine, serotonin, and DOPA. So these are uh, the very uh, important endogenous neurotransmitters in the brain, so, you know, both in the crab brain, but also in the human brain, in our brain. Uh, that are oftentimes difficult being detected with MALDI, but this was on tissue uh, derivatization, uh, chemical derivatization, that allows us to actually differentially ionize different sets of these um, molecules, including this uh, primary amines, um, basically uh, being enhanced by derivatization, the, the, this uh, pyrrolein uh, salt that really increased the ionization efficiency. 
So that's a one uh, area that we're uh, doing a lot of work to improve the detection of metabolites. And another area that we are uh, putting our effort is to look at lipids. And so this is one application that I want to quickly uh, tell you about, is that we were interested in actually in, through collaboration with uh, a clinician, Craig Ken's lab, to look at uh, uh, lipids involved in restenosis. So uh, many of you probably know that coronal acidosis occurs when the fatty plaques that deposit on the interior wall of an artery, which would clog, actually inhibit blood flow. So one of the common procedure is to perform this angioplasty, which actually involves install a, a balloon and is inflated in the artery to try to clear the blockage. And one of the complication with this procedure is that after the surgery, uh, even if you have this kind of a drug eluding stench, and um, there's still uh, over half a year or longer time, there will be actually recurring these, uh, the, the narrow of the blood, uh, blood, well, uh, blood vessel. So this is called restenosis. So there are a lot of interest trying to understand the signaling mechanism of what's happening. So our collaborator has developed this kind of a rat carotid injury model trying to mimic the restenosis uh, condition. Basically, they have uh, performed the balloon angioplasty on one side of the uh, artery, and, and, and the other side is just doing the kind of a, uh, the sham self-control. And after this, we can sample these tissues for three days, seven days, and 14 days after the surgery. And our interest is actually trying to look for different um, uh, lipid signature changes. So here shows actually the, the experimental uh, workflow for the multi mass spec imaging. So basically we can take the control and the injured rat um, artery in three days, seven days, and 14 days to look at the dynamic change with multi mass spectrometry imaging and then correlate that with the histology uh, staining. And here we can see that um, in the injury after this, there is actually a proliferation of these uh, uh, smooth muscle cells that actually cause the uh, narrowing of the blood vessels. So here show some examples of the multi mass spec imaging with the uh, uh, diisoglycerol and different isoforms, as you can see, highlighted here based on the accurate mass measurement. And the bottom uh, panel, two panels are the lysophosphatidylcholines. And here you can see the three days, seven days, and 14 days, the control and disease. So we can see that the injured ones actually shows upregulation, and the seven days actually reach the plateau with the highest kind of abundance. And then the 14 days just become quiescent. However, you can actually see there is actually a narrow of the lumen that shows that this uh, effect happens and then uh, uh, changing the upregulation. And then we have done more quantitative uh, analysis to look at these different distinct uh, lipid isomer species in the control, injured and control. In this case, we're using the area under curve to look at some of these when this is greater than 0.75, we say that can be actually utilized as a marker to uh, illustrate the, point, uh, uh, the, distinct, the distinction between the injured and control. And here, a number of these statistical analysis also help us to get better or more rigor uh, analysis of these different classes of diisoglycerol uh, being upregulated. And then we can correlate that with the uh, histology staining. And so for example, here you can see the three day and the three day uh, control in the disease, 14, uh, seven days and 14 days you can see the, uh, the segment of the intermal uh, layer. So this work was actually just recently published in, uh, the, as a cover for the journal uh, Proteome Research. And so to summarize this part, is basically we're using multi mass spec imaging to map a number of these different uh, lipids, in particular the diisoglycerols that were significantly upregulated during the restenosis process. And this has previous molecular uh, signaling uh, pathways already suggested the involvement of this DAG mediated signaling pathway. And also we found that the lysol PC is also involved in this process regulating the restenosis. So next uh, in the remaining uh, 
10, 20, 10 minutes also, uh, 10, 15 minutes, I want to uh, further uh, tell you about our effort of further improving uh, the both the, in particular the sensitivity using the sub AP module, so that's the next generation multi source. And showing here is uh, actually a, a schematic provided by Eugene from MassTech. As you can see, the, uh, the picture of this multi plate and uh, also the, the dial controlling the laser spot size <coughs> and, uh, and also the ion funnel, which is obviously the key for improving the sensitivity and ion transmission efficiency compared to our first generation of the AP. So here, as you can see that we couple this, again, as we couple this to our QEHF system, and this is a solid state uh, laser with 10 micron laser diameter and up to 10 kilohertz firing rate. So we can do really fast imaging experiment compared to our uh, um, the multi orbicap system. And this compared to the AP multi, this is operate at three to five tour and also interface with the QEHF to achieve a high resolution for both uh, imaging for both space and mass. As I mentioned that there's these two stage of uh, uh, ion funnel, the high pressure and low pressure ion funnel to really help to improve the sensitivity and I'll show you some of the example of that. And so for example, using this sub AP multi uh, QEHF platform, we were able to get more identification of some of these small molecule metabolites in lipids uh, as, long as, uh, as well as these neuropeptides in the negative ion mode that we previously were not able to achieve. In general, we have much better sensitivity in the, the positive ion mode, but here, uh, using this uh, uh, setup, we were able to get uh, some of, many of these uh, actually negative uh, ion uh, modes, for example, dopamine in some of these lysophosphate keto uh, F, uh, PE and also some of these neural peptides. So that's a broader class of uh, compounds that we can analyze in the negative ion mode. Another work uh, forms, and this is actually the comparing the vacuum multi and the AP multi platform for looking at uh, plant metabolites in uh, emetic cargo uh, truncatula involved in, in uh, salt stress. So here we're looking at the AP multi versus our uh, traditional vacuum multi uh, orbitrap mass spec image platform. So uh, this work was done by the graduate student Kaylin uh, Keller. And so here we're comparing, for example, in this case, the AP multi source and the, the multi, vacuum multi source, as you can see, that AP multi actually allows us to see more kind of a, a broader spectrum of things. But however, when you look at, and here is a comparing different matrix, the DHB and CHCA, and probably you will immediately recognize that in both cases uh, for the vacuum multi, we detect more species. However, the advantage with AP multi is the much better spatial resolution that we can achieve. So it's because the multi, uh, the traditional multi operate under vacuum, so it offers higher sensitivity. And also you can probably notice from this compare Venn diagram that there's still quite a lot of these uh, molecular species being uniquely detected by uh, either the AP multi or the other uh, method. So one of the uh, biological conditions that we're looking at is the uh, using this model plant metacargo transcatular. So our collaborator is very interested in understand the symbiotic relationship between the plant host and the soil bacteria during this kind of a biological nitrogen fixation. And one of the process they look at is the salt stress. So this, when the, the plant experienced the salt stress would actually decrease the plant growth and also cause the poor development of this symbiotic relationship in the root nodule. And this would reduce the nitrogen fixation capacity. So showing here is the, the, not the root nodule. So this is the root hair, and this is the nodule. And the stress, you can see uh, the salt stress is actually morphologically different. And this, so we were interested in looking at different uh, metabolites that during this kind of a salt stress uh, um, challenge. And what you can see, one of these examples is that we were able to identify this uh, particular metabolite 175 at uh, 0.1184. And this was uniquely present in the salt stress nodule with the AUC greater than 
0.75, and uh, and that's a uniquely present in the, the salt nodule, which is identified as an arginine molecule. And another benefit of using the AP mod, and this is actually using the sub AP moddy, we uh, not only improve the uh, the spatial image, uh, spatial resolution, and also improve the sensitivity to the point that we can actually perform MSMS. So this is actually taking this particular ions uh, choline and then do fragmentation. And showing that the bottom four are four distinct uh, metabolites, as you can see, we get pretty good uh, images. Uh, but more importantly, I want to point out that with this uh, AP molly, we can actually get a lot faster uh, imaging speeds. So for example, here, to acquire 2200 pixels in 16.91 uh, minutes, so this actually represents 8.6 fold faster than our traditional vacuum body source, and also the spatial resolution can be uh, much greater. So that's a, another <coughs> unique advantage that we were uh, uh, very uh, pleased about. And then another class of, a very important class of uh, uh, molecules that we have been using the sub-AP body to analyze is the end-link glycans. So here we are actually dealing with uh, formalin fixed uh, tissue section. And then after deparaffination antigen retrieval, we can uh, then do pancase F digestion to release the glycans directly from the mouse brain tissue and then use uh, the uh, sub-AP MALDI uh, platform to image the end glycan uh, spatial distribution. So before doing that experiment, we actually started with some optimization of our AP MALDI, sub-AP MALDI source to look at both the vacuum, as you can see, with the increase of the vacuum, obviously some of these, these are a number of these N-link glycans. We can see they're uh, slightly dropped uh, following the decrease of the salt uh, uh, vacuum. And another uh, a comparison is that look at different matrices. So we look at CHCA and also DHB. And, and what we uh, come from this set of experiments is that the DHB is less dependent on the laser energy where the uh, CHCA is actually more dependent on these different uh, laser energy. And then we compared using the sub-AP MALDI with some former uh, other studies, uh, previous studies. So our study actually allows us to identify many more annually glycans. So this is a 55 glycans. If you look at, uh, again, we have a, a lot, uh, probably about 18 uniquely present glycans. And showing here is the histology staining and uh, five representative different glycans that we can actually use this uh, sub AP model to get pretty good spatial resolution, but also being able to overlay some of these different end link glycans. And showing here are the MS, uh, the MS profile of these uh, different uh, glycans. A final example in this uh, application is that we've also look at a mouse model of the ovarian cancer. And here it is actually showing the location of the tumor. And using the, uh, the sub-AP model, we can actually look at a number, a large number of these N-linked glycans. And as you can see, interestingly enough, some of these uh, glycans actually show a good correlation with where the location of the tumor. So this actually really uh, um, increased the interest of our collaborator wanting to follow up some of these high mantles and leak glycans that is uniquely accumulated in the cancer region. So this is uh, the one of the spectrum showing that the number of N glycans detected from these FFP mouse tissue section was over in cancer with a, a large number of these uh, glycans, and including some of these showing the, for example, the bucosylation that is known to be implicated in the cancer development. So next I want to tell you a little bit about our work on improving or, or optimizing the condition and then improving the sensitivity with the sub-AP MALDI. And so here, uh, actually, uh, Gong Yu Li, who's uh, sitting in the audience, have done a serious, actually, systematic study to look at uh, the effect of different laser energy, frequency, and also the gas to uh, source uh, in, in terms of the ion suppression matrix add-up and the intensity of sensitivity changes with a suite of different peptide uh, standards. 
And so the general, I know this is a little, maybe a little smaller to see, but the general conclusion is that the sensitivity and uh, the overall important uh, the performance of these sub AP models is actually laser energy and pr pressure dependence is not probably not too surprising. And also we need to also look at more carefully some of the laser firing uh, frequency and also the energy as you can see. One of the uh, criteria that we look at particularly more carefully is the ion suppression effect that's less studied in the uh, multi source. For example, when we have a collection of multiple uh, uh, peptide standards and some of these are ionized much better or present in higher abundance that can suppress the detection of some of these others. And another kind of a unique feature for multi mass spectrometry is the, the, uh, the presence of matrix atoms. So from this set of experiments, if you look at the number, uh, the frequency uh, changing from laser rapid energy, so the, the overall conclusion is that in general, the optimized laser frequency for, for, the, uh, on, for this um, a profiling experiment is at uh, 1,000 hertz, that you get minimum uh, less uh, matrix addicts and less uh, uh, ion suppression. And then the other uh, set of experiments is to look at the increasing, for example, when the laser frequency is increasing, the ion suppression actually increases when if you look at, in particular, this bradykinin peptides but the matrix atoms are also decreased. So that's a, another good thing. So sometimes you need to balance both of these different aspects. So then we apply this to look at uh, lipids and uh, one aspect that we want to look at is the reproducibility and the robustness of looking at broad spectrum of the lipids in this uh, really complex, for example, crab uh, brain tissue section. So again, this is the optical image and here shows a number of these different lipid species um, and, and showing here both including some of the sodium potassium addicts and also its uh, protonated products. And what you can see is uh, in general here, in this one experiment, uh, Gumi was able to detect 68 lipids and uh, a second set of these uh, showing the, both the variability but also the reproducibility is that 77 lipid species being detected. And then we can actually look at a little bit more breakdown of these different classes of lipids for these two sections for DAG, uh, the single myelin ceramide uh, and phosphatidylcholine and all together and we can sum these and also look at the pie chart, their, uh, the uh, relative distribution of these, for example, the DAG and DAG show very similar kind of a, a distribution. So that, again, highlight the tissue heterogeneity, but also the reproducibility of this type of imaging experiment. And a couple more images to show that uh, the multidimensional and high resolution visualization for looking at multiple image species and also stacking them together, for example, combine these uh, different lipid species together. This is the, the code uh, LPC uh, and then the phosphatidylcholine and then merge them together to generate this kind of a more higher resolution and multi-dimensional uh, kind of uh, image from the lipid species. So another very interesting experiments that we've done is to challenge these crabs with low pH stress. So that's kind of a, a condition that mimic the ocean acidification. And there's very little actually non-study to look at uh, the dynamic changes of lipids in this kind of a challenge or environmental insult. So showing here are some very interesting experiments that showing the downregulation of some of these uh, phosphatidylcholine, the lipids, after pH stress, and two of these are actually decreased. And also you can see from morphology, the brain uh, size, the neur neuronal size is actually reduced. So that's a very uh, kind of an informative experiment that we can use imaging mass spectrometry to learn more about the biology. And another uh, uh, very interesting and important experiment that we uh, that Gongyi have uh, conducted is to look at the relationship between the spatial resolution and the sensitivity for the sub AP multi source, since we have the control of the laser step size and uh, the resolution. So from these images that you can see from 50 micron, 25 micron, 
and 15 microns is looking at the, the mouse brain, so our bell and tissue section. As we look at these three different kind of a step size and the neural peptide distribution and the lipid, from this Venn diagram, you probably recognize that with the 15 microns, so 25 microns, actually kind of is a sweet spot that gives us decent coverage of neural peptides, but more, obviously more lipids. However, if you do 50 micron, this, uh, obviously the spatial resolution is not as good, but if you want to get down to 15 micron, the sensitivity, so that will lose quite a lot of these neural peptide identification. So this is showing you the mass resolution and the sensitivity. So here is, uh, again, the, uh, the mouse brain, and we can see that we can simultaneously look at both the uh, lipids and also the neural peptide distribution from this type of experiment. And the final experiment I want to quickly touch on is that a newer uh, nanosecond photochemical reaction that Bowie has led to develop in, in the hope to improve the, both the sensitivity and also other chemical information that we're trying to extract from this in situ experiment. So showing here is this uh, nitrobenzoyl aldehyde under laser irradiation will generate this kind of a photoreactive uh, nitroso uh, benzyl reactive group that can actually label the primary amine group and form this uh, adduct. And, but here we're also utilizing this kind of a laser as a switch on and off switch to, by doing the laser irradiation within nanosecond, we can generate this kind of a very localized microelectrical field and also thermal uh, gradient. And the idea is to generate this uh, with the pulse laser beam, and the idea we can actually allow these more hydrophobic peptides and proteins migrate into the center, and then the matrix compound or these um, uh, uh, interference small molecule compounds diffuse at the edges. So that's the general idea if we do this kind of a uh, multiple pulses. Uh, through this uh, production of the localized microelectrical field. And this, in, in many ways, is kind of an on-demand, uh, three-stage three matrix removal regulated by the laser switch. So I just want to show you one quick example to show the effect of this nanosecond photochemical reaction that improves both the detection of lipids and also neural peptides in their sensitivity. So for example, here, with the, uh, the, this MBA, uh, with the nanosecond photochemical reaction, as you can see visually, the uh, images, we can see the control, and then with this reaction, that both the lipids and also some of these neural peptide signals show very sharp increase that was not present in the control, but uh, present in this photochemical activated reaction. So that improves both the sensitivity and also the spatial resolution. So we're currently expanding this uh, work to, uh, for further uh, optimization. So with that, I want to kind of wrap up to summarize uh, the, what I talked today. So uh, using the AP MALDI source, we were able to achieve both MALDI, traditional MALDI, but also multiplayer charge uh, ion production through LSI and M uh, MAVE mass spec analysis to achieve expanded mass range improved MSMS efficiency, and also imaging capability, in particular with label PBM protein analysis. And also by combining multiplex mass spec imaging and data-dependent acquisition, we can actually achieve uh, better in situ neural peptide identification. And with the AP MALDI source coupled with Orbitra platform, this can really allow us to achieve higher resolution mass spec imaging both in mass and also in space by multi-mode ionization and acquisition. And finally, with the mass spec sub-AP model with uh, uh, Q-Orbitrap platform that really provides a very good solution for improving both high spatial resolution, mass spectral resolution with great sensitivity for actually a diverse set of molecules that I highlighted today. Uh, finally, I want to give special thanks to the MassTech uh, company, uh, MassTech team, in particular Eugene, who traveled to uh, Madison, actually in, in cold winter, I think, uh, I forgot which, February, right? And um, he actually spent quite a few 
that is in our lab to uh, help and train uh, my lab people to um, be familiar with the instrument and get some of these great results. I also want to thank Vladimir for uh, giving us the opportunity to test on this uh, great uh, two generation of these uh, ion source. And finally, I want to thank the graduate student who uh, performed the, or contributed the work, Gong Yuli, who's uh, staying as, as, uh, is sitting in this room, and also Caitlin, Ya Tao, Jill Johnson, and uh, Qin Jing Wen Cao, and also the collaboration uh, with Mass Tech, and also Xi Dong Shi on the uh, Restinosis project, and also the funding. And, uh, and all of you for rising, getting up so super early in the morning. Thank you.